This is what happens when someone leaves me alone with a $50 gift card and says, have fun. Today I met Dote, as in Dote Coffee Bar, a coffee shop in Bellevue. You're probably thinking, really, the person who cannot drink or eat coffee products is at a coffee shop. And yes, yes I am. For one thing, a whole lot of chocolate. There's no line, I have time. Let's go destroy a menu, shall we? So this is the shortbread chocolate with orange zest. Mm -hmm. Very floral orange note. Orange is dominant, the chocolate is very mild. Nice. <laughs> Round one, hot chocolate, Queen Amon. So I believe I got the hazelnut. We I ordered a bunch at once, so my concept of time right now, what I actually ordered, is zero. For those of you keeping track at home of how I judge pastries, Queen Amon is a layered laminated dough full of butter and sugar, and there is really nowhere to hide because it's caramel, sugar, butter, and some dough holding it all together. Let's crack this guy open and see all the layers in there. Let's give it a taste, shall we? Cheers. This was made by someone who loves butter. It's very caramelized in the exterior, touch dry, but the crispiness really makes up for it. I feel this is perfect with a shot of milk. Mm. I did get hazelnut. <laughs> I didn't really should keep track of what I'm ordering. <laughs> so I got the hazelnut milk chocolate. This is the one that is recommended by the, by the, the pastry chef, if you will. And it's just, it smells like Nutella. So if you like Nutella, you're probably gonna like this based off the smell alone. Very hazelnut foam, very, very soft foam. It's a very milky, hazelnut, delicate chocolate. I'm really reminded what the Fairmont puts out for their hot chocolate, that same kind of milky sweetness that's very childhood memory, but instead of being Nutella, it's a very soft hazelnut note. And I feel like this needs a fireplace and warm mittens to be perfect, because this cup doesn't feel right. Like, Nice little cup, good size for an eight ounce, but it needs something cuter. So this is the brownie affogato. This is done actually special order because I can't drink coffee. This has hot chocolate in it, which is really dang cute. And it's just vanilla ice cream, brownie chunks, hot chocolate. Sounds wonderful right now. Oh, that looks, the foam looks so good. If you like brownies and milk, this is gonna be up your alley. The ice cream doesn't have a lot going on with it. It's a pretty clean, straight, no frills vanilla. Which is probably for the best here because you got a lot of competing flavors. You've got the brownies, which are quite dark and dense and fudgy. You've got the hot chocolate, which is kind of milky and sweet. And if the ice cream was really intensely flavored, you wouldn't be able to taste everything, though still I want to try this intensely flavored ice cream and see what happens. It could be delicious. The brownies are the best part. They're really fudgy and chewy and soften up so nicely in the hot chocolate. I should try this hot chocolate by itself, see what flavor I got. Oh. Tastes like a straight up hot chocolate. Nicely bitter at the end, so it's not as sweet as the hazelnut hot chocolate. So this is probably a dark, it's nice. Gentle, I can't like this guy by itself with some marshmallows. We are interrupting your regular hot chocolate for panna cotta. This is a vanilla panna cotta with a passion fruit jelly, which I am never one to turn down a panna cotta. Again, they're really great way to see how people think about their food because there's nowhere to hide in a custard. Oh, it even just smell the passion fruit. Oh, okay, nice and bubbly. Very thick, very sweet, intensely tart jelly. I'm not tasting the panna cotta yet because the jelly is so strong and so floral. Let's just get in there then, shall we? Okay. 
not is a much sweeter panna cotta than I expected, but it actually makes a lot of sense here. Panna cotta is dealing with the whole fact that the gel light is tart. Not very tart, but it's passion fruit. There's that floral tartness going on. So if you went for a not as sweet panna cotta, it wouldn't be as balanced on the bite. My one sadness here is that this is a lot of panna cotta and not a lot of gel light. I'd prefer this being a wider dish so you get more of each balanced together to really balance out that sweet tart action. That's such a personal preference on presentation though, so we're, we're splitting hairs at this point. Next up, we're taking on the Daily Dotes. These guys are their truffles and confections and they change every day or every few days, depending I'm guessing on the whims of the chef. And I got every flavor except eggnog just because I don't like eggnog. Sorry, fans of eggnog. And again, I have no clue what I ordered, so we're just gonna eat through. That ganache is ridiculously smooth. I feel like if you like Lynch truffles, you're gonna be very happy upgrading. I do personally wish the chocolate was a bit darker, but that's because I'm a person who thinks 100% bars are the way to go sometimes. And so I think if you're getting used to dark chocolate, this is still gonna be a really nice intro to smoother ganache confection-like things. We're hiding in like a, what is this, a 200 square foot kitchen? Like, this is smaller than a bedroom, just eating. Just, yeah. And me trying to not videotape two other people. Sweet <laughs> <laughs> oh. Turmeric ganache, straight up. Okay, that color is gorgeous though. Very light smell, you're not smelling much here. That's pretty. We got the chef hiding out of camera. Um, it's too many changes. Yeah. Oh. Lemon grass, cream and powder. Ridiculously, ridiculously smooth, of course. I love how it warms on turmeric and then warms to ginger, and then you get the lemongrass and pepper at the end. It just, it's, there's a really nice progression of flavor going on here. I've been told I must eat the muesli. <laughs> okay, bottoms up on the muesli. <laughs> really clean with the yogurt and then the bananas and the almonds. They are, we're having our healthy break <laughs> in all of this. Basically, if you like overnight oats, that's what the muesli is. tempered. We got milk chocolate. It's like a big old dried cherry in there and a hazelnut. Is it a dried cherry? Yeah. <laughs> Confirming what I'm eating is good. The tartness and the sweetness. That was all about the contrast. It wasn't about necessarily having the intensely fruity single origin Madagascar bean. It was about having intensity of the dried cherry versus the roasted nuts of hazelnut versus the chocolate. It's a really lovely just like snacking bar. Very, very smooth though, ridiculously smooth. You can tell Guitard was involved. <laughs> just a wee bit. I want it for tea time. Like it feels like a good tea time kind of snacking thing like with a darker tea and then a light chocolate and the cherry notes. Just, oh, that'd be lovely right now. Instead I've been eating chocolate for two hours straight. I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. The tote team was super sweet. They sent me off with some hazelnuts. So thank you again and thank you to Olivia and Sarah for hosting me, super awesome. I feel like Dote is this great middle ground when you don't want the intensity of say a bean to bar, but you want something good and something that feels good. 
and especially that passion fruit panna cotta that was so delicate and tart and lovely so i'd love to hear from you in the comments below have you been to dote yet if so what was your favorite thing because clearly i did not try everything i, mean, I haven't even tried these guys yet and as always i'm jess sales geek hoping that you get to go and eat all the things late us.